So Mildred and Eileen, you both are nominated again for your work on First Man. Uh, Eileen, you're double nominated, so double congratulations to mm -hmm. you. Um, <laughs> let's uh, just start from the beginning. Um, you're both uh, sound, you're nominated for sound editing. Also, Eileen, you're nominated for sound mixing as well. Just take us back to the beginning and tell us what Damien Chazelle's directives were for you with this film. What was he looking for? Um, okay, so um, we had an early conversation with Damien um, during pre-production after we read the script uh, to discuss with him. And um, he wanted, you know, um, space travel to have this um, kind of uh, claustrophobic, intense feeling and um and yet he wanted like space itself to have this like lonely chilling feeling and um he showed us some of the animatics that he worked up um that had a lot of some of the sound built in to the animatics that kind of gave us a, an idea of what he's looking for so um between you know all the authentic sounds that we need to gather um we also had to create uh, some um abstract sounds um, to tell some of these cockpit sequences. Um, in fact, uh, some of the film references that he gave us, you know, um, they are like not directly like space related. They are more like, uh, say, dust boot um, mm. for in the, in the space capsules um, as reference or, you know, something immersive uh, like Saving Private Ryan or uh, Son of Saul. Um, and uh, some of the Terrence Malick stuff. Um, just, he wanted to feel how close we are to the characters, with sound too. Right. You mentioned immersiveness, and um, you know, one of the things that this movie really does a good job of is creating this sense of you are there, and in so doing, you know, makes you feel the, the danger that these men were putting themselves in. Um, you know, I think that um, given, um, you know, it's easy to just kind of dismiss um, how radical of an idea it was that, you know, men were going to fly up to the moon in little tin capsules. So can you just talk a little bit more about creating that sense of, of danger and that sense of, you know, you are here verite? Yeah, especially, you know, uh, you know, in First Man, especially um, for these uh, cockpit sequences or space travel sequences, um, you know, we're just fortunate uh, as a sound people that it seems to be filmed and edited with sound in mind. Um, and, you know, because um, we wanted, Damien I mean, wanted to portray this as something unglamorous and to show how vulnerable they are. So we had to kind of, um, uh, you know, amp up the danger, but we have to start it off with um, something of authentic feeling, uh, such as for the rockets, we went out to, um, you know, record a bunch of rockets uh, from SpaceX, uh, that Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, and uh, ULA rockets and some other smaller lunar lander companies out in the Mojave Desert to collect sounds of thrusters and close up rocket ignition by you know able to record on the launch pad and um also to feel the weight and size of these launches to feel the g-force of it um we also went to jpl uh at nasa um well actually in Pasadena, um to record the acoustic chamber where they just blast uh, uh, nitrogen gas into the chamber to recreate the acoustics uh, so that we could test hardware components um, to make sure that can understand the environments during uh, and the sound pressure during a launch. So the, like say for that, we had to, you know, in order to capture the low end of the rumble, we even like one of the mics that we used, we had converted a subwoofer speaker into a microphone um, and, um, and then, you know, we, because we had to like, transition the sound uh, into something more uh, mm, visceral so you can feel this sense of anxiety for the astronauts. That's when we you know, took creative license a little bit and um, you know, use abstract sounds like you know, um, introducing like uh, and manipulating sounds of animal vocals like you know, elephant roars or um, mm. 
lion growls or even animal stampede. So it sounds like it's coming out of the sound of a turbine or the rocket crackle or fireballs. Um, just so we could play more into the emotion of the uh, astronauts. And, um, and and of course, some of the shakes, uh, you know, um, John Fasal, Millie, and I went and recorded some um, motion simulator rides um, so that we could get the um, um, the natural shaking uh, when it injects low frequencies uh, into the vehicle. So it, the whole vehicle just shakes and shudders. Uh, so you feel like you're inside um, and in enclosed space being like tossed around. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the thing that was so exciting about this film for sound was that um, in like, two key sequences, like the X-15 and the, um, the Gemini launch, you're literally in the capsule the entire time, so you never cut away and get to see what the heck's going on. So the sound has to tell the audience what's going on. So, And that took a really long time, right, to get it, like, especially yeah. the X-15, to get it quite right to help tell the story of what they were going through. Yeah, um, basically, you know, um, because Damien wanted to put the audience in the seat of the cockpit and, you know, um, and he wants these scenes to be claustrophobic and intense, um, they, uh, we only see what the astronauts see from these confined spacecraft. Um, so um, the sound has to tell a lot about like, what's, what's going on outside, you know, such as, you know, like Millie said, you know, when Neil's X-15, you know, um, was bouncing off the Earth's atmosphere, you don't cut out as much. So the sound has to kind of explain, um, no, tell a bit of, quite a bit of the story. Yeah, and I mean, it really does kind of work with that, um, that firsthand experience, you know, so much. I mean, the whole movie kind of rises and falls on, on Neil Armstrong's experiences and, and putting you right into his uh, moon boots shall yes. we say. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it really, it, it really helps to kind of like, because he wouldn't necessarily be able to see what was going on outside. He could exactly. only kind of judge. Um, you guys worked with Damien Chazelle before on La La Land, for which mm -hmm. you were also Oscar nominated. Um, that was a, a big kind of classic Hollywood musical. Um, so what were some of the, um, I guess, you know, how did, number one, how did the relationship develop from one film to the next? And number two, was it a different sort of experience uh, sound-wise, you know, uh, in terms of like what kind of references he gave you to, to work with and, and things like that? Um, well, one thing I have to say that there were a lot of differences, but one thing that was similar was that there, I saw a pattern in that in La La Land, there were kind of two worlds. There was the naturalistic, gritty world of life in LA. And then when we had the musical numbers, it became like a flight of fancy and it, it turned into something else. Whereas on First Man, it was similar in that so much of the film, like when they're on Earth, it's very documentary-like in terms of look and sound. But then when they go into space at a certain point, um, like with the Gemini spin or when they go on the moon, it turns into this other, it becomes another world. And some of those sequences seemed almost like musical sequences, the way they were treated in the film. Uh, we'll, we'll expound on that a little bit. Um, you yeah. know, talk, talk a bit about the moon scene. Okay. Do you want to the moon scene? The moon uh, scene? When they land. Oh, you mean yeah, like yeah. calling to silence and all that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, you know, um, when, you know, before... Look, Neil walking on the moon, you know, it's like one the biggest moment in the movie. Uh, so for the big moment, um, we actually, you know, decided uh, with Damien and us, um, we kind of decided to actually uh, stay soundless when he's on the moon uh, for an, ex an extended period of time. And uh, we actually go into, you know, pure silence, unlike, uh, you know, typically, most filmmakers would add some kind of a low, you know, um, volume tone under that space, but um, we decided to play it without any sound. And, you know, how we decided to do it was that, you know, um, when Buzz and Neil were inside the Luma Lander, after they have suited up, they had a hard time opening up the hatch door uh, of the Luma Lander to get out to the moon. Um, so from our research, you know, um, 
that was due to a difference in air pressure. So we took that idea uh, and um, created the sound of air rush building up when they are in the lunar lander trying to open up the hatch. Once the hatch door opens and the camera zooms right out into the moon, um, you hear this sudden rush of sound of uh, air rush and it builds up really loud for a quick second and it, it uh, immediately drops out into like complete silence once we're out on the moon. Um, the idea that we wanted to do that is that Damien wanted to surprise and overwhelm the audience with this massive sensory overload. And suddenly like um, once you know, the camera zooms out and stops onto the moon and the sound drops out and suddenly you know, you're in, on the moon and it's silent. And um, you know, the difference in this aural dynamics helps make the silence um, a lot more deafening and kind of a little um, suffocating sometimes. <laughs> but oddly, as the scene plays without the sound, um, it kind of gives you this like feeling of calm and peace uh, and has a weird effect of like also some anticipation. Mm -hmm. And out of that silence, we had to you know, bring the audience back into Neil's perspective. Um, that's when, you know, we did some research with some uh, former astronauts like um, former Apollo astronaut Jim Lovell uh, about how it sounds in the spacesuit. So we slowly introduced the sound of uh, uh, Neil's breathing and the sound of uh, air hiss um, from inside the spacesuit in the helmet, which we actually recorded using um, former Apollo uh, astronaut John Young's um, bubble helmet that they he wore for the Apollo 10 mission. And then that would then lead into Neil's uh, famous dialogue on the moon. Uh, you, you know, I, I spoke to some other people on, on your sound team. Uh, they <laughs> talked about that, uh, that need for authenticity. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just talk a little bit, uh, just expand a little bit more on why it was so important to go the extra mile and to, you know, do these things that you're, you're talking about doing in order to capture that authenticity? Well, part of it has to do with, it's part of our, our social consciousness, a part of our history. We're all very familiar with the way, you know, the images that we saw from the moon and, and the words that we heard coming from the moon. So, so in my case, one of my biggest challenges was um, dealing with Neil's um, words from the moon, what he said on the moon. Uh, when Ryan Gosling performed it, on set, he was actually listening to what Neil Armstrong did and, and, and did it very close to what Neil Armstrong did. But then on top of that, um, Tom Cross, pic the picture editor, um, sent that to me. And he also said, so he sent me what Ryan Gosling did and he sent me what Neil, what Neil Armstrong did. And he said, please make it sound as identical as possible. So then I spent a lot of time making, like I sort of stacked them one on top of the other. So I, I literally, matched exactly the timing, took all the, the static from the original, took the chirps from the original. And then when I got it as close as possible, I then tweaked syllables and words with Revoice Pro to get the pitch exact too. So um, we just felt that we didn't want to use Neil Armstrong saying it. it had to be Ryan Gosling, but it had to sound the, exactly the same. So. Um, that was fun for me. And then several people have told me they thought we actually did use Neil Armstrong. So that was pretty cool for me. Yeah. Um, this is the second time that you two have been uh, nominated at the Oscars for your work on a Damien Chazelle movie. Um, what does that recognition mean for you? Um, um, you know, it's definitely, um, I'm, I was, I'm still surprised that, you know, uh, and, and feel really like, fortunate that, you know, we get to have this chance to um, do this whole experience again, um, especially, you know, but uh, I, I, it's just mostly because of, oh no, all the hard work and, um, and from our team and, you know, um, and having like Damien's, um, you know, brilliant vision guiding us and kind of pushing us, you know, to, to, to get to this. Um, but. For me, you know, um, I'm just honored that um, our peers, you know, kind of nominated us for this. Yeah, and, and for me, I, while we were working on the film, it was 
very intense. We had our, our schedule had been shortened a little bit because they had made that decision that they wanted to open the film at the Venice Film Festival. And so our, our, our mixed schedule was shortened. So we had to work um, like every day of the month of August, like literally every day, really long hours. And but the whole time it was it was one of those experiences where it's very intoxicating. You're you're sort of obsessed with the film and you kind of get immersed in the whole process. And um, so it made me really happy that the film was recognized with, with the nomination because I felt like for me, it was one of the most intense and rewarding experiences as a sound editor. So it's just an extra little, um, like I, I like to call it like the cherry on top. It's, it's made me incredibly happy that, that um, it got recognized. Yeah, and, and also, you know, uh, you know, on my end, because. Well, um, I do some of the mixing and effects work, and typically, you know, um, I'm just, um, I just felt like first memo was like especially important to say, you know, to me too, is because you know I add some film with lots of like um, action uh, in areas and heavy sound design um, that I just feel so fortunate uh, as a sound designer to be able to be a part of it that I get to mix and design and supervise um um because um yeah um uh, just fortunate to be picked to be a part of this film crew. well thank you both so much uh, congratulations again on the movie and your nomination uh, pleasure talking with you same here thank you thank so you. much thank you